Hello and welcome to another My Little Podcast. We are your hosts. I am Bree. I'm here with my father, Gary. Hello. My mother, Shelly. Hi there. And my brother, Bryson. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about U.S. presidents. Uh, a few of them, each one of us has picked one to talk about. Because uh, it's President's Day, it just seems only, you know, right. That, or, I don't know, it just seems Very like it's just in, in, the, in yes. the mood, in the festive presidential mood that is today. You know what and I mean? something that we have never studied before or known. Yeah. Like, like pick a president we didn't know about and that's And study him. Yeah. Try to find one that you're just like, hmm, I've never seen that guy's face. He looks interesting. You know, <laughs> There's 45 of them to pick from. So, And then uh, we're also going to, of course, be discussing comments and uh, questions that, that people have asked in the Weekly Peak, the m- most recent one that came out on Friday as well. Uh, but before we get into that, a quick word from our sponsor. This week's sponsor is MyLittleHomestead.com merchandise store. In the words of President William Henry Harrison, times change and we change with them. Which is so true because each week we add a new design to our store. If you'd like to to see the latest or check out the large selection of of designs that we offer, check out MyLittleHomestead.com or visit the link in the description. It's really... (laughs) Ding! (laughs) Very nice. Well, it's interesting that we pick uh, William... Because I'm going to be talking about his grandson. Oh. Who is also a president. Whoa. Oh. Right. In the family. In the, yeah, it, it ran in the family, the only one that existed. He had a lot of firsts in his pres- in his four years. He had a lot of firsts. So that's what I'm gonna pre- but I don't have to go first because I've already been chit-chatting for all of a few minutes. Well, maybe no, one. No, no, Should we go? go? Oh, yeah. You're talking. The you segue. Might well I might as well. <laughs> We're segued right in. Uh, so the president that I picked out today is Benjamin Harrison. And Benjamin Harrison, he was president for four years from 1889 to 1893, which if you take off your shoes, it is four years. Ooh, mom's thinking about it. No? No, I was just, yeah, oh. go ahead. Oh, no, I thought, she looked like she was going to say something. No, I no, don't. I was oh. thinking. I oh, was thinking. My thinking you look. were moling. The moling look. <laughs> I always say to kids, oh, I'm going to mole. I'm going to mole over it. And they're like, mole? <laughs> M-U-L-L, mole, I would say. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, he was born in Ohio, but he heralded from Indiana when all was said and done. So... There was a migration at some point. Who's what? born in Ohio? Ohio. Oh my gosh, the person I picked also was born in Ohio. <gasps> Me too. No Me way. Too. It's They're almost like was, it's almost like it wasn't quite fifty two states to pick from. There was only maybe a few. Yeah. And there was only Which so many that could come uh, from here. Yeah. Mine mine can spell Ohio. So Oh, oh yes. that's excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Oh. Wow. I don't know if mine could or not. So you had a bright one. You yeah. got a bright one. You got huh? a bright one. <laughs> <laughs> Four letters. He can figure it out. Or, or is it mine? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's O H at the end, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> mine is apparently known for his writing. Does that count? His memoirs and stuff he wrote. Oh, he was sorry. a writer. Okay, back We're back, to We're back though. Thank you. I'm sorry. To take us back all the way around to Benjamin Harrison. Um, he was named after his uncle, who was a doctor. Which I, apparently that was a big deal back then, the doctor thing. Now, I mean, it's still a big deal, but a little more commonplace. But the big thing I thought was really interesting is his grandfather. He was also named after his grandfather, who was one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Ooh. So this guy, I mean, he had gra- his, his grandfather was president, maybe for only one month, but still president. Um, and then also his, his grandfather did that. I thought that was kind of interesting. But what, what makes him kind of cool is he was the very first president to have electricity in the White House. But it is said that he got a little shocked, and so his family refused to touch the light switches after that because <laughs> oh. the light switches must have got him a little bit. <laughs> so, and then, um, he was also the very first president to get his voice recorded. It might oh. sound like a bag of marbles, but it's still, still there, still quite the momentous little thing. That is really neat. He was also the last guy to have a beard. And they think that they no longer did beards because it rubbed against the microphones and caused. Oh, little shockaroo? Not shock, probably, Just but noise. the the oh. scruffy, the scruffy scruff, you know what I mean? So. Mine rubs against the <laughs> microphone all the Mom time. Mom doesn't know what you yeah. mean, but maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming. I don't know. I've, I, um, oh, oh, no. I've lost everything. It's all gone. Oh, no. My notes. They've disappeared. Wing it. Oh, but now, so he would be um, the 20 what? The 22nd, 23rd? 23rd. 23rd. Okay. Because then he also, oh, oh shoot. Okay. I'm serious. I really did lose it. Wait, is it on my on my iPhone in my notes? Nope, not there. Not not there either on my phone. I'm really sorry. Apparently, I, you're done. 
I'm <laughs> well, he was, you remember that president that was also, he was the 22nd and 24th president of the United States. His name was Grover, something Grover. Cleveland. Yeah, Gro- Grover Cleveland. He, um, he broke up. He was the one that won in between Grover Cleveland's runs. So he was oh. the one that kind of came in and, and busted it up. Busted it. He busted it up. And now his <clears throat> grandfather, which was kind of interesting, was that William Henry Harrison. And that guy only served for one month because he got pneumonia. But, plot twist, they were going back and looking into it because all of the presidents that served through the 1840s, they all died of similar things. Pneumonias or um, some other, there was some other stuff that they died of. And they think that, that William was, didn't die from pneumonia, but what those other people didn't, uh, what those other people also passed away from that did the 1840s, uh, served in the 1840s. But they were going through the map and they thought that maybe the White House's water was contaminated because there was a dump just a, like a few blocks away. So they think that that's what actually was getting oh. the presidents through the 1840s. So anyway, wow. that's the end of the end of mine. Yeah. <coughs> so what was his, what was his name again? That was uh, Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin Harrison is his name. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. mine came a little bit before. Okay, wait. Um, can I can I go next? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because cool. I think you're gonna go and then. And then oh yeah. Go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. That begins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you actually came. After okay. Mine yeah, because me and mom. Oh, mine came after. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I okay. picked the twenty fifth president oh. of the United States, Ooh. William right. William McKinney. He was. Yes, he was an Irishman. <laughs> um, well, he had an Irish last name. I couldn't say it was uh, Irish or not, but uh, I think he had the, his parents were kind of in that area, uh, English Irish. And then, uh, but he, being the 25th president, he, he kind of got that whole thing, and he served uh, from uh, 1897, 1800s is kind of our time that we're picking in here, I guess, mm-hmm. <clears throat> until he didn't serve anymore, and I'll tell you why. Uh, he led the nation in the victory of the Spanish-American War. Do you remember we had another war called the oh, Spanish-American yeah. War? I know. Yeah. The more you get into it, you're like, man, we, we had a lot of little ones. Just, yeah. Just, well, the Spain Spain wanted to kind of do some things, and we got you know we interrupted that whole thing. Okay, so anyway, uh, he also did this whole idea of uh, protective tariffs that we use to help to make the playing field fair today. Uh, so that's something he he did. He wanted to promote American industry, so he's very much uh, interested in um, seeing our businesses here do well in the United States. Uh, he had he was really part of the gold standard. That was really his biggest thing. He pushed the gold standard because there was this idea of getting silver, or what they called free silver, uh, which was really more of an uh, expansionary monetary policy thing that was kind of out there for uh, um, uh, to help keep this gold standard rolling along. And that was his deal. Last president to have served in the American uh, Civil War, <clears throat> so he was kind of the guy that. He started the he started in the war as an enlisted server so soldier I'm sorry as an enlisted soldier, and he went on to uh, be a major when he when the war was over so oh, uh, so he was done fancy. there yeah pretty cool after the war guess where he settled Ohio. he wasn't born there Ohio oh <laughs> yes. Ohio Canton Ohio I think Ohio and you can spell that different ways if you spell it with four letters or five you can just put extra O's at yeah, the like end what's, what yeah. is it what's the state with that's round on both ends and and tall in the middle oh oh Ohio. yeah that was the old that was a little joke when I was younger yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> he uh, married Ida Saxton and uh, he did that whole thing there in Ohio uh, he didn't really kind of get into politics right away. 1876, he started uh, his his campaign for politics. Uh, he, he was elected in Congress, uh, became uh, a Republican Party's expert on the protective tariffs. Remember, he was really big on this tariff thing, which I outlined at the top. And uh, with the protective tariffs, he thought it would bring prosperity. And guess what? It did. Uh, <laughs> Plot twist. I thought, oh, oh no, man. it's all going south from here. Boys. Nope, no south here. 1890, he, he, he had what's called the tariff, uh, McKinley Tariff. And it was controversial, and um, the Democrats uh, kind of got a little bit, a little bit, uh, you know, they wanted to change things. So they did some redistricting in that area that uh, he was living in as congressman, and a little bit of uh, they they were accused of some gerrymandering and some other things that kind of happened with the uh, different uh, divisions of where where uh, people could vote and how the the districts were set up. 
and uh, he did lose to a landslide in, in, uh, yeah, in 1890. In 1890. Okay, yeah. so we're in the 1800s. He wasn't president yet. Remember, he's only a congressman at this point. Not oh, okay. my story. Oh, oh right. Yes. Okay. Oh. He was elected president. We started there, and we're kind of going backwards. Uh, Wait, I didn't so go he to went birth. From president you know, to being I'd, elected? No, she's going back in history now. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Congressman oh. first. We've gone right? back. Yeah. Okay. We're getting Con- the origin story. Stick, stick with him. He'll take okay. place. Yes. Okay, okay. And then back when he was an amoeba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see. <clears throat> we have. Uh, uh, he was elected uh, governor after his defeat in uh, 1890, 1891. He was elected governor of. Ohio? Ohio? Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, Ohio. Um, 1891. Just a theme. Uh, yeah. I know. I love it. Yeah. And 1893. Uh, he did kind of a moderate course uh, as far as his political ambitions. Uh, he was really interested in capital uh, investments and things like that and, and uh, labor interests, those kinds of things, was some of his focus. Hawaii kind of came in there as a, uh, a territory in 1898. So you can kind of see that he was – Really into some expansion ideas, making sure that the the little guys were were, t- were helped and taken care of. <coughs> and this is question just, just to confirm. This is William McKinley. William right? McKinley. Did you also know that he was on the five hundred dollar bill? Oh <gasps> yes. Thank Whoa. you for blowing point number six. Never okay. seen a five hundred dollar oh, bill in my life. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm five hundred dollar bill. He was sorry. Right. So how many of you have a five hundred dollar bill? <laughs> I know I've never seen one in my so, life. No, I, I want to go to a bank be like, here's five hundred dollars. Can I have one of those McKinley bills? Yeah, please? they wouldn't believe you. They say, oh, it's fake. So Come he on. must not have a beard because you said the beards were done. No, they he didn't were have done. A beard. Oh, no beard for him. No beard for him. No scratchy scratchy. Here's what he looks like on the five hundred. Oh, very clean oh, cut. Yes. If you very look it up, cuts. it's not like the, uh, what is it, the uh, mm-hmm. rabbit thing, the jackalope? It's yeah. not a jackalope, I promise. <laughs> it's um, real. No. You know, just... back then, in, in those days, they didn't have Photoshop, so they had to have a guy come in and uh, and repaint over his uh, nose ring he used to have there. Oh, so nose ring. Yeah, wow. he had a nose ring and a yeah. tattoo. Popular. A tattoo of a little thing on his cheek. But anyway, um, no, obviously. Um, let's see. We we left off with Hawaii and the five hundred dollar bill, and then of course uh, the historians really kind of feel that the victory uh, that he had in eighteen ninety six after uh, realigning his election, he got reelected. Um, he he really helped to kind of um, break up the system a little bit in that time. The progressive era was starting to come in um, as a party back in that time too. So we had that kind of thing kind of going on. So there was a lot of division politically in that time. So there wasn't a lot of wasn't a lot of hey, let's go get let's go do this thing, you know. So, but anyway, his whole presidency was uh, cut short because he was shot. Uh, yeah, 1901, he was assassinated by uh, Leon Zeskozov. Zeskozov. I can't really say that name. Anyway, he was a second generation Polish American uh, with anarchist uh, leanings. Um, McKinley's um, presidency was really considered above average and was really you know, quite a highly positive public image of uh, what he had done. However, guess who came in after he died? Hmm. Roosevelt. Ah. Mm. And, of course, his whole presidency was overshadowed because Roosevelt was such a dynamic person. So, mm. All right, there you go, friends and family. Uh, wow. That was a lot. I know. <laughs> Mine's going to seem so uh, short. Uh, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I've done like five minutes of research. No, um, <laughs> the but anyway. So, I mean, mine's on a president that I don't really know how to pronounce his name, and I've looked up videos on it, and we still don't know how to pronounce. It seems his name. everybody has a different. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it, uh, the best pronunciation, if I could say this right, um, was Ulysses Grant, is the president's name, um, and he was the 18th president. Um, <clears throat> Also, the, what sprung about this whole research on this particular president was he was on the $50 bill. And we were trying to figure out what president was on the $50 bill, and it was him. And we we're like, what? It's Grant. So, um, anyway, so then. He, gonna, well, what gonna, years was he? Yeah, he's the 18th uh, president, but what years did he serve? Okay, so um, I'm going to quote off the Wikipedia because it's the best place I could find for info at the moment. <laughs> no, um, so he kind of came after Abraham Lincoln. Um, and, of course, Andrew Johnson, because Abraham Lincoln was, of course, assassinated, which then Andrew jo- Johnson, the vice president, came in. And then you have Ulysses Grant now was in office. And he ran from 1822 to 1885. 
he was president and he lived 63 years and that's it no i'm just kidding what, you said 1822 to what 1882 to 1885 82. Okay, so no, a total of four one. years okay, for ulysses that, no no it's 18 oh i thought oh, this no, was what wait, you said hang on hang on hang on hang on wait, carry, <laughs> carry the one a little bit hang carry on the here. one hang on <laughs> oh no we've we've thrown bison a oh, curveball that's okay. We will roll. It's actually 1877 to 1881. Okay. Oh, okay. Those dates. Okay. My bad. That's I was reading when he lived. He lived from 1822 to 1893. Okay. That's how long he oh. lived. Oh, okay. We're rolling. 70 years. We're rolling. Okay. Um, anyway, um, <clears throat> I'm sorry. 63. That's okay. Stop Wait, with the math. The wrong Move on with the facts. Oh, geez. Like, I have the wrong ones. I'm all messed numbers. up. Okay. Anyway, Ulysses. <laughs> Ulysses. <laughs> okay. People at um, home are like confused. So, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't do well on dates. My bad. But uh, anyway, um, so apparently he was mostly mostly known in the army. Um, he was like a commanding or not a commanding officer. Hang on here. I lost my spot in the hole. He okay okay. Starting from some <laughs> start again. Here. Ready? Go. <laughs> he <laughs> fought in the Mexican War, which I didn't even know we had a Mexican War, but we did have mm-hmm. a Mexican yeah. War. <laughs> um, and during the Civil War, hello Arizona. Um, hello. He, like, How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> which actually we have. We I think have we to gave thank. it back. I think we want all we of gave, it. Give it back. Is that the war? We gave some of it. Or back. gave some of it back. We didn't give all. We of didn't it give back. all of it back. We're just like. Mm, we'll so give we you actually have him to thank. For Arizona and kind of a bit of Texas, I guess, and California. Oh yeah, right? okay. I thought Arizona was purchased. Maybe it was. Oh I no, I better stop talking not. because I don't <laughs> I know. Yeah. We're starting to speculate now. <laughs> We're so. to no speculation. That's how we mess up history. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> history is so screwed up. Don't take it from me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so apparently he was one to gain in the uh, Civil War. Now he was one. He was uh, he was able to gain the Mississippi River in 1863 um and then abraham lincoln after his after grant's victory and i pardon this i don't think i can say this but chatta chatta narang chatta naranga which is after grant's victory at chatta R- oh, naranga yeah. okay now, i can't quite say that right it? That's it, yeah. um a uh, president abraham lincoln promoted grant to lieutenant general oh. for 13 months grant fought robert e <clears throat> lee uh, during the high casualty over la- overland campaign at Petersburg. On April 9th, 1865, Lee surrendered to Grant at o- 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 pa- o- Tex. O- pa- o- pa- o- pa- <laughs> they love giving you <laughs> these they words. Like these words at me. <laughs> A week la- later, Abraham Lincoln was, of course, assassinated. Oh, wow. Um, a week after that. We had won the war, succeeded. though. The Union we had won, won the though, war. Right? We won yeah. the war, I think. It's not we, it's just we, the Union. The Union yeah. won the war. Yeah. We, yeah, actually, we weren't there. It was a long was time a ago. Big part of winning that war, yeah. too. Um, anyway, and then of course, um, after that, then we had Andrew Johnson. Then succeeded him uh, because he was vice president at the time. And then, and then once Andrew Johnson Johnson succeeded Abraham Lincoln, he promoted Grant to general of the army in 1866. Later, Grant op- openly broke. With Johnson over a reconciliation policies, um, Grant used acts. Da, 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 skipping along, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> getting to more of the juicy and parts. And then he became president. No. The end. No. <laughs> uh, okay, so now this is kind of interesting. So, um, at when pre- when he was finally elected president in 1868, as president, um, he stabilized the post-war national economy so apparently he's really he did that he created the department of justice and persecuted the co the the q klux klan persecuted or prosecuted prosecuted yeah okay we don't want to (laughs) make sure we get our work um and then he appointed (laughs) african americans (laughs) and then he appointed african americans and jewish to permanent federal offices so i guess he was kind of too he wanted inclusiveness to everybody which is really cool Um, I think that's, I mean, there's a lot more on him, but that's kind of the little bit I did. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's awesome. Research. Granite, it was pretty messed up. Granite. And, uh, <laughs> okay. well, if Got you want to really learn it, the Wikipedia does a great, well, I'll just walk through all that. But That's good. No, you did the research. That's awesome. It's, it's a little interesting. 
I did mess up dates. Yeah, now, Ulysses sounds attention. pretty cool. Yeah. Bringing the country together. I, I always called him Ulysses. I don't know why. I, I always called him Ulysses, or... too. I didn't know it was Ulysses. I called him um, Ulias. That wasn't oh. right either. Oh, Ulias is a fun pronunciation, really, though. I like that. Really weird. Ulias. But anyway, Ulias. we were interested in because he just was on the $50 bill. Like, what great thing did he do to get on the Now, the, it's the bill. easier to find that you have a $50 bill in your wallet than yes. a $500 bill you know in what? your wallet. So. I don't you don't well. it. Guess how large our bill actually went. I went to a hundred thousand dollar bill. Really? Yes. Yeah. It is insane. Whoa. How many? Who how was many on that one? one of those okay, hanging so do you around, want me to go so. through all the bills? Because I found no, I don't. I, want, I just want to know who was on the hundred thousand oh, dollar one. I just yeah. want to okay. know. Okay. okay, it was it was Woodrow Wilson. Woodrow, Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. Wilson. Whoa. Yeah. And then we had a ten thousand dollar bill, Solomon Chase. And then we had Solomon Chase. A five thousand dollar bill. Sorry. Five hundred James Madison. Was that five hundred or no, five thousand? Five thousand. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Then we had a thousand dollar bill, uh, Grover Cleveland. Okay, Grover. And then we go, of course, go to the five hundred dollar bill, and then you guys know the rest. Yeah, and Benji, oh, who Benji never was a president. I know the one dollar bill. That's about what I have yeah, in my wallet. The one. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, that's Benjamin, the most. The only that's about the one dollar right? bill. <laughs> How lucky is can Benjamin? Get? Must be the only only non president that got himself on on face of a bill, huh? How about Chase? Benjamin. Actually. Was there a president I Chase? Would say there probably was. Now, was Alexander George Hamilton? Washington, he... Ale- but he's on the $1 bill. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. he's yeah. president. I mean, I'm just... I, mean, I think that's him with George his hair out on the side. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the poosh it's on the side. Yeah, so it's, uh, I actually have him up. Do you want... So George Washington was on the $1 bill. Um, Thomas Jefferson was on the two dollar bill. Is, is, is on the two dollar yeah, bill. Sorry, <laughs> we may not they make them are. anymore, but they do still anymore, exist. Yeah, <laughs> they still yeah, technically. The five dollar yeah. bill is Abraham Lincoln. Um, the ten dollar oh, yeah. bill is Alexander Hamilton. Ah. Oh, now, Hamilton. Okay. Okay, and then the twenty dollar bill is Andrew Jackson. Fifty dollar bill is obviously okay. Ulysses Grant. Okay, yeah, okay. and so then we go up from there. Very cool. Bill, that is Franklin. awesome. <coughs> There's bills I Thank didn't you. even know existed there. Can we have wow. a few of those? Nice <laughs> yeah. Gosh, I kept thinking Give me that hundred thousand dollar bill. Dollar so. bill. I mean, like, whoever used that? That's got to be only used in like. Can you banks. imagine? Hey, I mean, can you, like, do you have change? Do you have change for this? <laughs> you came out of that. And like, you would you wouldn't want to like you know frame what? it. Here's the weird part. Yeah, is if you actually owned one of those. A, like a legitimate one, it'd probably be worth more oh, than yeah. the actual amount just because it probably is pretty oh. rare, I would yeah, think. Yeah, you probably wouldn't have that hang- hanging on your wall, no. you know, in your office. No, you My first $100,000 I made. It's <laughs> 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 a $100,000 bill. Or something. Uh. Anyway. All right, so mom, you have the most interesting one because we had to save the juiciest one for last. I do you have the inter- Mom, well, she you know, just somehow, she always comes up on this stuff. It's so great. I don't know. I, I just... I. I started looking into it because I thought, I want to learn something about history. And so for some reason, I picked this guy um, because he had he did not have the shortest presidency, but he was like the second shortest presidency. I think it was somewhere around six months or so that he was president. Okay, But um, he was our 20th president. His name is James Garfield. And um, he became president in 1881. And when you get when I get done telling the story you'll say, why don't we know of this guy? I mean, he should just be very well known because he had, uh, it was pretty extraordinary and and very well known at the time. And the people living there at that time would have wondered why we wouldn't have ever heard of him if, oh, if you're yeah. like me and haven't heard of him. But maybe other people, you know, have. Obviously, people who study history, I'm sure, know who this guy is. Um, anyway, he was the last president to bo- be born in a log cabin. Um, he was born in? Ooh. Ohio. 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 Yes. Ohio. Ohio. Hang on. What's his name again? Uh, I want to really commit it to James my Garfield. James Garfield. Okay. Yep. Garfield. Got yeah. you. I'm and on he it. He was born in 1831. And when he's really young, he's uh, probably 18 months or so, his dad dies. So his dad's pretty Aww. much out of the picture. Mm. I believe he's he's got his family, his mom's there, and I think there's like seven kids. And um, she later on does marry. But um, they call him an unsuitable, she called him an unsuitable husband Whoa. later on. And she was granted a divorce, which is really rare at that time. But Whoa. they granted her divorce. And I, Garfield don't really talk about him. So I don't think he was really that, that great on the radar. But anyway, so he grew, now he's, he's really a studious. He loves to read. He wants to be a sailor one day. And, um, and the family um, sees him as, as very, uh, as a, you know, as the one who's really gonna needs to go on to school because he's he, the, his desire is, is for that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so he did at one time though. Got he got to be like a, um, a tugboat, like the guys that kind of pull those out. 
Yeah. Oh, Tug really? Boat cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have tugs in those days. Yeah, something. Yeah. But it was wow. like a like he called them or something. Like there was a like anyway. He did that for about six months. He got sick. Went back home, and his mom nursed him back to health. He ends up going to a couple different colleges. He he does well. Um, he ends up uh, he's teaching to kind of help him because he's poor. He's very his family was very poor, obviously, mm. and um, so he's kind of working his way through college. He ends up um, not only teaching there, but pretty soon he becomes president of of his school. So he just is always you know kind of just automatically rising to the top. Um, and then um, the Civil War breaks out, and he joins. And, um, again, he rises in rank, and he's doing well. He's fighting for the Union. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Lincoln now is he, – he, he uh, meaning President Lincoln, um, he is looking to recruit people. And he finds the best place to recruit, recruit people for to come into government – is in the battlefield. Mm. So he he definitely wants Garfield in there. So he recruits him and Garfield decides to run and he's and he goes into the house and he mm. is uh, a representative for Ohio. <laughs> yes, for um, <laughs> s- several years. He's there for several terms. Um, he's a strong he, he's a strong union guy. Um, and then um, um, he he then eventually he runs for the Senate and he wins. But he never becomes a senator. Whoa. He just becomes Senate, Senate elect. Because <gasps> what happens is they have the Republican, um, um, I always get. Convention? Uh, yeah, the Republican Caucus? convention. And they have a three way split, okay? They have a guy named Sherman. They have Ulysses. Ulysses, Ulysses, Ulysses Grant is running Ulysses. again now. He's come back and he's he's running for a term again. And then wow, they have a guy okay. named James Blaine, and and they have like uh, different f- factions. Now Sherman is the guy who helped um, Garfield get to be a senator. So now mm-hmm. he wants to help. He wants to help Sherman out too. So he's g- there to give speeches on behalf of Sherman. And um, now Sherman represents what they call the half breeds. Ooh, okay, oh. and they're kind of the the guys that want change. Okay? Oh, okay. And then there's oh, the stalwarts. Okay. They call them the stalwarts, and these are the guys who want. They're more conventional. Okay, so you, Ulysses or whatever. Ulysses. Ulysses. Ulysses, Ulysses. Ulysses. Ulysses Grant. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he he. The man with four names. <laughs> <laughs> he represents. We don't know the dates because Bryson totally butchered that. <laughs> <laughs> now he's for the kind of the conventional Republicans, and then you got the half breeds now that are representing change. This is a term name, like a they're a they're, group name, right? Yeah, it's it would a group. be like just kind of like um, nicknames that they picked up. Okay, within, yeah, right. They had T-shirts made. The T-shirts know. made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, and so Sherman is representing the half breeds, and then they got another guy, James Blaine. I don't know what he represents. Okay, so they're they're trying to vote who's going to be our presidential nominee for the Republicans, and they're going round and round and round and round and they're voting and voting they're like up to 35 votes and they can't figure out what to do and and um our guy garfield gets up there and he does this great speech for sherman right and then he asks who do you want expecting them to reply sherman Sherman. and they reply garfield oh and he's like oh no, 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 no. That's not what I meant. <laughs> and, of course, the 36th vote comes along, and who becomes the presidential nominee? But Garfield. Wow. So that's, that's cool. how he becomes the nominee. Jeez, wow. going in not to be president at all. And so comes out pre- president. <laughs> yeah, so he, and, and so he does it. Now he's Senate, Senate-elect, right? So, but now he's not going to be a senator. Now he's president-elect. He's the only man to ever be senator-elect and presidential-elect at the same time. Wow. Because he eventually... Oh. He does, by a narrow margin, he ends up winning uh, the wow. president. But uh, now right. a guy named Chester Arthur um, becomes his vice president. No choice of his. The stalwarts who are, uh, there's a powerful senator from New York. His name is Conkling. And he makes sure that Stalwart. Chester Arthur becomes his VP. Oh, okay. So Chester, no choice okay. of his. That's his VP. And, and I guess uh, mm-hmm. at the time, nobody could imagine Chester Arthur as a president. He's, he's just not presidential in any way, mm-hmm. shape, or form, apparently. And um, anyway, um, uh, so anyway, so one thing about him when he's, uh, like when he does his inaugural speech and stuff, one thing that's really important to him is education. It was how he got out of poverty. And, of course, 
um, we're we're still in a in a time when um, African Americans are it's it's an important time to to boost them. So he really feels like education. He wants he wants universal education, government education for all peoples, and uh, so that the African Americans can rise up because that's how he himself yeah, rise so, up gotcha. rise up through the system too. So. Um, so as soon as he, he gets in now, he has to start, this is kind of interesting too, he has to start assigning, you know, who's going to get to do what. And he quickly, he gives four African Americans prominent positions in the government. And one, um, if, if uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard of uh, Frederick Douglass, who's a very famous oh, African American. Right mm-hmm. Anyway, he got appointed in, in his uh, in his government positions too but um and also interesting enough a uh, tad robert t lincoln the son of of um president lincoln, lincoln wow also oh. uh became his secretary of war as well so oh. he got him in there as well Very okay cool. wow. so okay. now you can imagine garfield is president he was never running for president he has no ties to nobody he has no ties because he wasn't he wasn't slated to be. I don't know how Sherman's feeling at this time, but he's <laughs> he definitely has no ties, right? So now, and he's picking appointments now to different places. And you have to, they, you pick your nominees, they go to the Senate, and the Senate approves them, right? So um, he's picking from both the... Um, both fractions, right? So he's got the half breeds and then the stalwarts. So he's picking both. Now Conklin is, remember, he's a senator and he's a powerful senator, mm-hmm. and um, they're all fine and dandy because a lot of the um, a lot of the um, the the people from his fraction are getting nominees. So he's okay with that. But there's one nominee that he doesn't want that he wants control over, and they did generally have control over their own states. Things, but there was a port of entry in New York that made more money than all the other ports in the country combined. Wow. So it was a very important port, and he wants to pick who goes in there, right? Well, there's already somebody in there, obviously, but he wants he wants control over that appointment. That makes sense, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. Garfield says, no, nah, I think I want this half-breed William Robertson in there, right? So Conklin just pushes back, no, 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 we're not doing this. So there's this little little battle that's going on. And so what happens is Garfield pulls all the nominees, which are all stalwarts, okay? He pulls all of them, and he only puts Robertson out there. So the Senate has to, they have to deal with him. Right. Well, Conklin doesn't know what to do. So he decides him, and he's going to resign. He takes the other New York senator with him, and they both resign, expecting to be asked back. Oh. But that doesn't happen. Oh. Robertson gets confirmed as the guy, and Conklin goes on his merry way. <gasps> so Garfield becomes this, this, all of a sudden, he is in charge of the Republican Party now. He, he beat the big, the big powerhouse in the Senate. Um, so he gets a lot of respect from that. Okay, so one of the first things he jumps in and does um, is there's the biggest federal department, okay, is the Postal Service at that time, mm. okay? And there's something that was called the Star Route Scandal. And what was happening was um, uh, they were giving federal con- – this is going to sound familiar. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving federal contracts to, to private stagecoach and wage uh, – and wagon agencies, right? Because they're going to deliver to the farthest stretches of the U.S. Probably. Yeah, of the, of the yeah, U.S. Okay. Right. And so, what's happening mm. is they're giving contracts in return for payoffs, and so um, mm. they end up clean. He he, he ends up having them clean up that whole thing. And there were several people from Garfield's own party that got implicated in that too. Oh, wow! But he cleaned that up, and um, anyway, so he he was obviously gaining enemies all along yeah so when we hear of what happens to him you know it's going to be an insane person who does this but you you can't help but have all these conspiracy things going through your head because he obviously is upsetting a lot of people in what he's doing okay so now six months later you know you've been on a job for six months you need a vacation yeah obviously i mean Uh, you know so uh (laughs) (laughs) so he's he's walking in the train station now keep in mind uh lincoln was assassinated but you think you'd have some protective people around you no no we're not we don't have protection you just walk to the same station in in dc so a guy by the name of of charles gateau 
comes up behind him, shoots him once, skims his arm, and he hollers out something. Then he shoots him again right in the back. Oof, duh. Mm. And, and then as he's, and of course he falls to the ground, Garfield falls to the ground, and Gateau starts trying to get away, and people are all yelling, lynch him, lynch him, lynch him, as the cops are kind of grabbing him and hauling him away. And believe me, he gets lynched. About a year and a day later, he is hung for his crime. Oh, yeah, jeez. Uh, but that's another whole story with that <laughs> lunatic. Anyway, <laughs> so then, of course, now, Gateau, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Garfield is laying now on this, in the train station, not a very clean place, and now people are, uh, you know, doctors are coming around quickly, yeah. and um, they're, they're trying to get this bullet out in this very unsanitary place. Mm. Now, keep in mind that, we didn't really start doing the hand washing thing, thing until about 1900, 1905 in that area. So these are the 1800s. People aren't really thinking about sanitary stuff, right? Oh, okay, right. So on. Um, they can't they can't find the bullet. They they take him to the White House into the room, and there's now now what's and another interesting thing is that there's a doctor by the last name of Bliss, and he pretty much takes charge, and he doesn't want any other doctors around, and he and he's kind of keeping people out of the room and taking charge. And he is, um, anyway, they are trying to, they continue to try to find this This bullet. bullet. They cannot find it. They're poking and prodding dirty hands, dirty instruments, who knows what. And, um, and now he's, he, he's, he gets, you know, he's getting, infections obviously for that is, and yeah. he, but he gets better for a little bit we think he's going to do okay and he's it, this is going on for for a few months now it's not Ooh. it's kind of a long a long process and so the country now um we have alexander graham bell who five years prior had had invented the telephone mm-hmm. so we have telephones in certain places you know probably wealthy people the white house has a telephone um and there's so there's a little more communication than like in lincoln's day for mm-hmm. instance so people are really getting wrapped up and, and also the telegraph too i'm sorry would be in there too but there's just um there's a the whole country is getting wrapped, even even england's getting wrapped up in this and oh, there wow and so alexander oh, wow. graham bell is you know he's done inventing this so he's thinking i'm going he, what he wants to do is invent a, a metal detector to help out the president, right? So he invents this little makeshift metal detector, and he comes to the White House. And, of course, Bliss, who's in charge, has him check the right side of the body. Won't let him check the left side of the body where the bullet is. Ooh. Interesting enough. Okay. So anyway, so he checks the right side of the body, can't find it. The, doesn't, the machine doesn't work right. He finds out later that the bed that he was sleeping in had what you know had the the springs in them which was rare at the time but those springs they were metal and it was throwing off his metal detector Mm. so they never did so he was not able to get the bullet out eventually he gets sick and and before he dies now um uh let's make sure i didn't miss anything here uh before he dies he doesn't want to die in the white house so they take him away and pretty soon he dies from infection heart failure and uh, Frederick Douglass, by the way, is said to be by his side when he died, mm. but he died. He did not die in the White House. Um, and um, let's see here. I, I, and then I just say people from the 1880s would be shocked today to know that most of us have never heard of our 20th president, James Garfield. Uh, me being one until now. Yeah, well, <laughs> now I know mistake. too. Good Jeez. research. Wow, that, that is awesome. intense. Yeah, he is a fascinating guy. Oh my gosh. And it's interesting that the metal detector did work. It just there were others. There was other things that were causing it to yeah. seem like it didn't work. Yeah. I wonder how many inventions people have made that didn't work, or they thought that didn't work because of something else that was just stopping them in a certain scenario. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, cool beans. Um, okay, so uh, I think that concludes our just our presidential overview. part of things. I think we have about 15 minutes or so. I don't know. We have over 40 presidents left to do. <laughs> oh, 41. 41. Well, I did cover three-ish. Oh, that's true. We did kind of talk about a few. Ish. Others. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Anyway, that that was really cool. 
I mom mom was having so much fun researching. She's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to talk to you talk to you guys about Garfield. I was like, I can't wait to hear it. It sounds interesting. She watched videos so, and everything else. Oh, yeah, we have a ton of reference links. Yes, really if you'd cool. like to learn more about the Garfield conspiracy, well, I mean, it's not conspiracy. I mean, we know what happens. Well, we could make one up. We could make Easily. one up. It, Easy. It, it it's totally a fits. That's I know. There's a it lot. Would be there's a lot of fingers. Interesting movie. Good point. Yeah. To, to re to re. Oh, but it'd be such a sad ending. The guy dies. Maybe it's a fiction and he lives. <laughs> well, you say it's universe. based. You just say it's based on a true story, oh. and then you make him live. And then you make, make it, him live. Make it science fiction. Some aliens came down and actually took him away, and he's president someplace else. Whoa! Now that's a plot twist. If I ever never did hear one, and there's no mention of aliens at all. Just all of a sudden at the end, yeah, where he would actually die, yeah. the aliens show up, <laughs> load him into a yeah. into a spaceship, and off they yeah, go. Yeah, he's right next to some cows <laughs> and some other things in the spaceship, and they go away. Exactly. I love it. So on the recap that we did last week. I thought we'd start there uh, of the Sandrill um, full version that we, we put out. Somebody asked, uh, Mark, Mark Hammer asked, uh, did you end up selling it or did you keep it? Uh, and, and they did end up. And I, they had said in the video as well that they, they were going to sell it and they didn't end up selling it. Yeah, they did. Because so, they didn't really they didn't feel like they really needed it. So And it's an investment. They like buying stuff, fixing it up, playing with it a little bit and selling it. That's one of the things they like doing. Yeah, and that was a really interesting point. And, you know, sometimes y- you miss things that should be in the video, but you don't realize it when you're kind of in the details of it. And that comment is really important because it's a reminder of something we, we forgot that really should have been in there. Mm-hmm. And... We're going to um, probably, this one will probably go up on Amazon too. And so um, because of of his comment, we'll go ahead and uh, add those things to the video before we put it up on Amazon. So yeah, we forget, we forget about the cost. Really important. So thank yeah, you for are, that mm-hmm, comment. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, Nathan asks, uh, mom and dad, you guys, um, what is it like to only have two kids at home? <laughs> Who, us? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're, it's us. Yeah. us. you and I are yeah, the Because they're the adults. Yeah, and we're obviously, the kids. they're the adults, the mature ones. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. They take care um, of us real good, don't you think? Kate? I think they do very well. <laughs> so I, I, I feel um, I'm happy inside. I'm not sad. I, I don't feel indifferent, but I do feel glad that others are moving on, you know, and doing their thing. And But I miss them, you know. I'm the very emotional, you know. <laughs> clingy kind of guy you know when it comes to the kids but you know they're going out doing their thing and i'm, I'm really glad so um so it's uh, i guess i'm glad that um we have the the extra room so that um that bryson and Bree can have their independence yeah. you guys can have your independence mm-hmm. and also i mean to a certain degree and then uh but what's nice is that because we all work together it's nice to be so close together so that we can um it's just easier getting all the work out when we're all in the same general vicinity. Yeah. So, yeah. It also, it also too, it isn't like they're gone. I just still talk to all of them every day. You know? Yeah. And we're still, we're still together. We're just not sleeping in the same areas, I guess. And have yeah. to drive a little further to get to see them and the baby. Yeah. And we all have the common work together. Yes. Too, we still do is, that. Which is um, obviously yeah. really a blessing. Oh, we'll call Garen or, or Shay or something and say, hey, come over and help with this or that. And so, you know, we all still do stuff together. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, they have now have their independence, and and Garen's responsible for other things, and Shay is now in that same area. So starting to be responsible for other things herself mm-hmm. and so on. So that, that's a good thing. Um, uh, that leads right into another question that we had as well that you guys kind of briefly mentioned. Uh, with all the kids moving out and whatnot, how will that affect all the videos and I think that, that that does kind of pertain to the contact that we have with one another. You know, some of us might get interested, you know, with Garen and Ellie. Of course, they get interested and they want to participate in the videos. But um, there was never there's never any pressure from you guys. It, you know, it's kind of whatever we want to do. If we want to do the video thing, we can. If not, you know, you guys are always super supportive of us, mm-hmm. you know. And we'll kind of see what Shay gets interested in, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say that um, I thought after the cabin, you know, Garen and Ellie were going to ride off into the sunset yeah. and that would be <laughs> the end of it. And I, I really expected uh, my little homestead to kind of wind down as all you kids, you know, grew and moved on. What I didn't anticipate is that, um, you know, Garen and Ellie would want to continue to participate and at their their little homestead as well. I mean, they're creating a, their little homestead there, and that and they provide um, not only footage for us, but edited footage that comes 
that comes our way every week. Um, and I think I think um, you know you two too, Bryson mm-hmm. and Bree mm-hmm. also have um, have indicated you know you guys have come on board more so than I didn't expect it to grow. I expected it to kind of wind down, <laughs> but I see it only growing. And as you guys um, move away, you you still are. Even Shay is like, if Shay had the time, she would be, and I know that her goal down the road here is to provide us footage as well so that it can, it can really get to be bigger and more diverse and, um, and more fun is, is, you know. But like you said, Bree, there's no pressure if anybody mm-hmm. wants to say, ah, forget this at any time. But what I've found, what we have found is that we're, we're loving it more and more the more we do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember mom was always, mom was, uh, mom is, and dad both are always very like, oh, you should do it together. You know, you're always, you know, wanting us to be together and doing stuff together. You're always pushing us gently together, you know, as friends and stuff. And uh, all the way growing up, we've all had our own channels. We pr- produced hundreds of videos outside of my little homestead, or, or at least for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I know Bryson has done several as well. And so has Garen. We've all kind of had our own channels. Uh, but naturally, I think we all just, we get excited doing projects together. And that's what we've really grown to love. We have great relationships with one another because of how we were raised, you know, as well. Uh, and, and just, we get along really, really well. So I think we just gravitate naturally to my little homestead because it's, the uh, subjects that we're interested in doing we love creating things with our hands and whatever it is you know and uh yeah we're really excited very dedicated i know i am personally i won't speak for bryson and, no, and the yeah, rest no, of the family but it's very exciting it's yeah, yeah we're sold out we can't help it we love it <laughs> so. a part of it. It, was, it was kind of a, a while back too we were all just kind of sitting there and we we're like you know we all have our own separate channels you know <laughs> and like what are we doing we should be pooling all of this talent we have <laughs> into one you know, we shouldn't be sitting back trying to go our separate ways. You know, it would be far better if we try to pool all of our talents. And yeah, interests and yeah, skills we're better together. together. Mm-hmm. Better together. Better together. It's because it it's always like that, is. Yeah. When you have a group of people, it's way better than a single person on his own, you know? Though each so, is great, it's more each fun is great. to have more, I think. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun to work together. It's fun to work with family. I, I, I really, really like that. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. very nice. For sure. You can definitely be way more direct with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that has with like benefits. A complete stranger, that has benefits too, the directness, but also too, it also means that you know it isn't always a big happy family. There are times when people get a little upset. Oh yes, definitely. You know, yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. some people push harder than others, and and me being one, I probably push the hardest on everybody. <laughs> um, I think so. but, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> ask Bryson this morning. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, but anyway, yeah, sometimes I, I get a little pushy and. To expect things that are not reasonable. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. We have high expectations for ourselves. So why don't you have high expectations? Do you know? I do. I have such high expectations. I can't meet my own. So <laughs> it's like you got to meet yours at least, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we each get passionate about certain things too that others aren't. So it's really nice, you know, like, oh, he's really passionate about that. I'm going to get in, involved with that. And then I'm a super passionate about something or whatever. So we, we get, to, we each have our own we, places that we, we, you know, there's yeah, no yeah, clash we, in that yeah, way. Yeah, and we respect that. <laughs> yeah, I, I push that. for deadline. Get the de- we got to get the deadline. We got to get it out. Video's got to get out. <laughs> Fridays around here are like crazy. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. We're, we're sometimes. getting more relaxed because we we're are. starting to get into a pattern. You know, yeah, so if like, we can get it done. Early, if we can get it done better. before Friday, it's a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're like, yeah. <laughs> Friday at six o'clock Pacific, we don't have a video out. It's like, ah! <laughs> everybody's like, you yeah. deadline. Yeah. No! Everybody's all upset. Where's the video? <laughs> <laughs> it's like ground zero I'm sorry. here. Everybody's <laughs> rushing around. I'm sorry. It's too bad there's nothing we can do to make the internet go faster. Because usually, usually that's the only thing that that's stops usually, us. That's the and problem. that's the one thing we can't control. Yeah. <laughs> like we that. just sit there looking at it. We're just like, when is it going to finish? we got to go here. Yeah, and yeah. sometimes it'll be up to like 90-something percent. And then it crashes. It fails or like, something. Oh, no. <laughs> and we're already 15 minutes late. Uh, no. Oh, gosh. If there was a hamster wheel that made our what we could run in to make our internet go faster, believe you, it would be going all the time. We'd, we'd be, wear we'd it be out. in there making it happen. <laughs> we'd be replacing hamsters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one hamster couldn't do it. So. Uh, so Sherry Young says, "Question: Why don't you use some rollers when painting walls and staining the floor? It sure would go faster." And to that, we'd say, "Sherry, you're absolutely right." But here's the thing: we're used to painting round surfaces that are not flat. And so when we were given the, the, we were given rollers to paint the house, you know, and, uh, um, Shay's new home. We did, we did roll that. We did roll, but initially we didn't because we didn't think that that was an option. You see, (laughs) we don't, (laughs) rollers are not even, why would you, you can't roll. cutting in. 
We're cutting well, we in were. Maybe you were not in on the we're cutting in break. Initially, yeah. you guys were decent. The memo on that I remember one. mom and dad were like, uh, you could just use a roller. I can't believe you're doing that with a two inch brush. You know, like yeah. I kept hearing that all the time. And um, I just I just never thought of using a roller because they never work for the buildings that we make because they're yeah. so organic oh. in nature. Or bumpy yeah. and stuff. So, but when we started using it, yes, Sherry, <laughs> it went really fast. It was amazing. <laughs> It isn't about speed. It's about the event. Oh, right? is it? Yeah, yeah. It's the <laughs> okay. labor. Yeah, it's I the love work. the wearing that it does on my arm yeah. when yeah. running that who brush needs, back and forth. Who needs those muscles in, in that arm socket anymore? Oh. I mean, that shoulder doesn't need to move. Really it's nice, just, that pain. Yeah. Love re- the pain. <laughs> love the pain. I remember, Feel the pain. <laughs> I remember when I was growing up and we lived in a neighborhood and um, – um, these little, these two story houses, and across the street from us, the neighbor was painting his house, and he had a spray gun, which you know that was kind of new fandangled just for a homeowner to have a spray gun. But he had a spray gun, and we were painting ours with with literally I don't even know if we used rollers too. Oh, we gosh. were just brushing it on, and the neighbor was coming over and like. You know, because he was just oh. going so fast. Of course, he was overspraying everything. But oh, that gee. was another His story. His entire yard was white. But <laughs> the um, tree goodness. got a little more Trees. green. Oh, green. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it was green. Okay, right but he came over to kind of, you know, yeah. like, I got this sprayer and this is this is pretty awesome. And, you know, he leaves my dad's like, well, brushes are better. We're getting, we're getting it on there better. It's going to last longer, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, Ty King uh, asks, uh, what is Gary spraying on the ceiling of the old house? What were you spraying? Because I know you had a, a patch there. What were you using? Yeah, it. Uh, some people might have thought it was uh, popcorn, but no, it wasn't popcorn. It was just a regular orange peel uh, texture that I was spraying up there. and um, To match the rest of the yeah, ceiling. Yeah, the rest of the ceiling was mm-hmm. textured in that way. So instead of brocading it and all that, you know, that's, I had to do the whole ceiling. I was the only one to do part of it. You it was a patch. You showed me a trick on that too when you're patching the different like ceilings. I'm sure it works on a popcorn ceiling too. But if you take and you you put your, your mud up there after mm-hmm. you've cleared it out of the way or take and put your, I don't know what that mesh is, you put on the creases. Uh-huh. But you put that up there and you put the mud up there. And then at, once you're done, you take a rag or like a sponge and you wipe over it. It like blends the lines and you're showing me if you can get the lines blended in. Oh. And then you spray the, the spray on there and it like hides it. And all you need to do is paint it and... It, it it's oh, works really yeah. well. You taught me that. I, I didn't know how to do that. Well, you know, now oh. I know how to patch a ceiling. I mean, <laughs> our ceilings are like wood floors, <laughs> and you know, <laughs> they're a little different. We don't use sheetrock. Have you noticed? No, we don't yeah. use sheetrock. We had some of the existing it. buildings had sheetrock on them, but yeah, we, we had to do that for the existing building. Yeah. And we were like, what is this that we're using? <laughs> like, everything was like, <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know? um, it's, and, oh. it's so interesting how there is sheetrock, though. It's like such a like standard. Gypsum. Like, yeah. it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, not around here. It's mud. <laughs> yeah. it's different uh, kinds of mud. Yeah. It's well, let's talk about that. Because right now out of the backyard. We were doing the remodel, and that's a square house with square corners and rectangles. And, you know, everything's at a 90 degrees. And uh, we were in that for a little while, like a day, and we're going, oh, I'm feeling weird in here. It's so <laughs> confined. And nothing. It was a strange feeling to it be in, in a square place like that yeah. and, and and for a while. And it was really, to get back home, a completely different oh. feel in a rounded room. Yeah. Yeah, a round room. You hear people say that, like, "Oh, it's so it's the feeling in here." Like I've heard uh, our uncle say that and stuff. Like I've heard people mention, it. "Oh my gosh, the feeling in here is different." But you really could feel the difference yeah. there. It yeah. was interesting it is a after feeling. spending a few it days is, there. That's yeah, what it is too. It but is if you're thing. from a square room and square building, that's yeah. normal. You know, mm-hmm. so you have that. It's not good or bad. It's just it, it really is a different feeling. It's interesting. Feeling. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, Anne Red said, Anne Ray uh, asks, "Why does Bryson have bar stools in his aquaponics area?" <laughs> Well, <laughs> the fish like to drink, let me tell you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they drink water all day. Like, seriously, constantly. They live on it. Like, really. No. Um, uh, we actually, I think we got them at a, at a garage sale. They were given, they were given, they were to, given to us. To us. Yeah. Yeah. They were given to us. I don't, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Mom, we you, just set them there. They're like, you oh, brought we them back. And we're like, they're not there now. No, we, they're we not. Actually we're actually saving them. them for Shay's, Shay's house, I think. Yeah. Or and then somebody, we found out they were too tall for Shay's. Oh, okay. Uh, her, the bar at her place is actually, shorter. It was Ben's house we were going to put it in, and then he never used them. 
They're just yeah. too tall. They're just too tall yeah, for anywhere. Didn't, yeah, didn't work, they didn't so. work very well. Yeah. I, but I think in Shays, they're going to work well. No, we they're too tall. tall. They're too they're tall too for Shays, too? Yeah, because I brought them out there. Oh, and they didn't work. So actually, when we brought them back, they're now in your tool shed. <laughs> so you oh. got, got a tall place Are to Are we going to cut them and shrink them? You can if you want, but they're in the tool shed now. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> they're okay. like They're like one of those things that you're like, man, these are really cool. We should use them somewhere they and are cool. Yeah, they're, they're cool looking. Yeah, retro, but it's just really like cool. where to put them. So they're in limbo at the moment, but they limbo. will find a spot eventually. Yeah, we, they will. They always do. Um, so on to the aquaponics thing. This is kind of a segue uh-huh. in. Um, M Wall says, "I just watched a news article about aquaponics in in Afghanistan. They're using old foam mattresses to grow plants in them, and it's working beautiful." You should foam check out mattress. the information oh. on that. It was pretty interesting, and when I seen it, I thought of you guys. Cool. Interesting foam mattresses. Was it memory foam into, so right? that they could uh, memory uh, foam so they could remember how to grow <laughs> <laughs> or like you grow a lot in there. I don't know. They just stick. Maybe they, you probably could just stick the plant right in the foam and the foam would float on the surface and it's maybe it would water. just grow. It wicks. It yeah. wicks and that's interesting. Would hmm. it sink? I wonder. Eventually. Do they come with pillows and oh. sheets? Well, it's your hope so. <laughs> You have to make, you know wash them fresh. They day. say cover your plants. Well, maybe it's hey. real covers. You know what I mean? You got a comforter. Maybe. On, on yes. the bed of mattress. I like it. All right. When they get cold, you <laughs> snuggle them up with a nice comforter. Natasha Leon asks, do you have a moringa tree? <gasps> Actually, yes. Mm-hmm. One that I really don't know why it's still alive. It looks really weird, but it is living still. I don't know how it's still alive. It lost at one point. It lost all of its leaves. Mm-hmm. And we thought, oh crap, I killed it. And then all of a sudden, the next thing I know, branches started coming out off <laughs> yeah. of it. I'm like, well, maybe that's just part of the cycle. I mean, I don't that know. That thing I've never is probably one. three feet tall. Yeah, and at the very and top you of grew it, it from yeah. seed and an eighth of an inch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like this teeny <laughs> little stick. It's got this little branch that goes all the way up, like three feet. Then then it's got leaves at the top, very top of it. And the only thing that's holding up is the stick that I jammed in there <laughs> to hold it up. Otherwise, the thing would just fall right over. But, uh, yeah, no. It, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's still alive. It's uh, The most interesting tree. It's supposed to be a tree. It looks like a vine to me yes. cause of, because of the stick. You know, Jeez, it's like. I, I didn't realize they were so long and thin. I thought they were kind of shrunk. But I was thinking maybe the light. Maybe there's not a lot of light where I'm growing it. I don't know. But it's. Uh, it's yeah, there and it's living in there. So you put that stick in there because otherwise it was like a vine. It's, it's like a vine. It's literally going to be like a over. pine tree when it gets older. I mean, like, it's going <laughs> to be so Now, you tasted high. leaf too, didn't you? Tasted a leaf off of that? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, it tastes very good. Okay. I remember it tasted like a uh, lettuce. I think if I tasted like lettuce. Interesting. Oh, okay. It's like lettuce. Is it like, is it like the chicken of, uh, of the plant world? Like you taste it, you're like, it tastes like lettuce. Is that what lettuce is? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, like, oh, it tastes like lettuce. Like, oh, it tastes like lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't figure it out. Oh, like, oh, like, they always say it tastes like chicken. It yeah, tastes it like say, lettuce. It tastes like lettuce. That yeah, it, that must be the case, yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, let's see here. Uh, Mary Ellen, uh, Allen uh, says, I, um, there is a special pencil that you can purchase that is used to draw vertical lines on windows, which birds won't fly through. It's the same principle as cat's whiskers, I think. I believe the verticals aren't greatly visible to humans. And, and obviously how close you draw the lines to each other depends on the size of the bird's wingspans. And she doesn't know the name of it. Um, but I guess you like... It sounds to me, from what I'm gathering, it's a pencil that you draw that you can't see but the birds can. And it keeps them from flying through your windows. That's interesting. Yeah, you have that's to redraw it when you clean the windows, or I know that's the one thing I, I wonder. Yeah. And because you don't mean you got you got to clean them. Like, yeah, yeah, that's a, interesting. But that's yeah, that would be nice to huh. have something on there that keeps them from. There how about, was how about one of those plastic stickers of a of an owl? <laughs> there was that. That was a recommended thing. Like there were some yeah. recommended things that you could put either on the window or like in the back that would help prevent the birds from coming in on those windows. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. Shay will have a lot of to, fun. Mm. Suggestions. Yeah. Shay will, I imagine Shay will be looking into that because that f- first bird that bangs into that window, that's going to bother it's her. It's scary. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> it just makes you jump and then you feel so bad. And even though the bird flies away, you think, man, what a day that bird just had, you know? What I mean? <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we can find some ways to prevent those birds from doing that. I mean, that. it's uh, kind of funny. <laughs> 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 well, yeah. In a mean it's, way. It's mean. So it's, uh, well, I mean, you know. <laughs> In a mean way. <laughs> Sue, Sue uh, Hulbert. I uh, says, how did the co- uh, the carpet deodorizer work? Oh, I was really impressed with that. Um, I, and it was, 
and as you saw, uh, you know, Bryson actually did a little test on it. And, um, yeah, we're going to bring that um, – uh, that well I don't have any left I left Shay with a little spray bottle of it in case you know something happens she wants to use it and then we're going to make another batch here at the house and just have it work. I think we should just have it around I, I think yeah it'd be really good to use in laundry too I don't know, you can pour that in laundry and yeah. wash your clothes in it or what I, it's good at disinfecting but I don't know like there were there was absolutely no stains on those carpets that's what was so weird. Oh, yeah. Um, so I don't know if it would get stains out. It does odor, but, you know, it'd be nice to see, does it? You does know, it also get the stains as well? Yeah. Isn't there that Nature's Miracle or whatever? That's the stuff we've always used. It's so expensive. Yeah. Is this stuff a little cheaper to make? Uh, yeah, this is way cheaper to make. Uh, but this one also has some chemicals in it. I don't think the um, Nature's Miracle has okay. it. Just, enzymes. It, the enzymes, yeah. Enzymes. Um, there are really some. Cool. I noticed online, though, there were ways you could make your own enzymes that you didn't. But I didn't go into that because I ended up going with this guy's product. But, yeah. yeah. That's so cool. That's the really carpets cool. were, like, super nice. It was just the smell. That was, yeah. like, it. Yeah. Like, you know how when carpet gets smell, trampled you know. a lot, you know, like, it doesn't have a lot of. But it, these were really nice. So it was yeah. awesome to be able to save them because yeah. they were, they're, they'll work for many years yet. They're very nice carpets. So. So. It, it's really cool, too, how you could see where all of the spots were. So you could see where. Yeah, you know, popping up all popping. over, and it's like and you would never have known. Yeah, and at first we were thinking, well, maybe we, that was just the spots where you poured more of it on, and it just sunk in more. But we did a test on that, and that's not the case. That really was where there was something there that it was killing. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it was For really sure, cool. pretty crazy. Really All right, crazy. well, I think that is going to wrap it up for us this week. We do provide these podcasts every week dutifully on our Spotify on, on, on a Spotify and iTunes podcast. This podcast does go up on on those places as well. We, uh, we, so yes. Is there anything else that we'd like to add before we end we end Rui? I don't. Are you supposed to say Happy President's Day? Oh yes. Or? Oh yeah. Is there like a Happy President's Day? I don't know. I, don't know. I guess is it's it just happy, happy President's Day. Yeah. yeah. Happy President's or just Day. maybe maybe get an opportunity to do some your own research. Yeah. About yeah. Four and of our presidents. You let us let us know. Our government worker. Happy day off. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Happy day off. Yeah. 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 It's Very good. cool. We envy you in the <laughs> private sector. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and let us know if you have a president, a favorite president, and why. We'd yeah, love to hear it. We're cool always open to that. learning and sure. new things, and yep. and that's what that we 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 read the comment section for the first twenty four to forty eight hours. So if you get in during that window, we usually see it, and uh, so I typically almost get an eye on. Almost you, everything. Everything. Oh, you're so, an everything type guy. Yeah. Wow. See, I read the ones you don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's. Just, I, I like to just make sure I'm in touch. Yeah. If you're ever wondering who answers comments and who hearts them, it's generally Gary or Bray. And some sometimes I'll get in there and do a little bit, uh, but for the most part, it's you you guys do most. And of when that. it comes to the responses, if it's a one word response, it's Dad. If it's a few sentences, it's me. Yeah, and you <laughs> add emojis. Yeah, yeah. I don't do emojis. Yeah. They're like, they, they say, oh, you can't have, there's no way to express uh, emotion in text. And I say, what are emojis? They're literally emotion that you can have expressed in text. True. Yep. There you go. Debunked. I love emojis. <laughs> Debunked. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Walk it out. Anyway, thank you so much for being a part of our family. And we look forward to hanging out with you for our recaps on Wednesdays yeah. and in our in our Friday show as well. Yeah. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.